He's interested in everything. He can work alone. But we're the crew. So much better. A hacker is free. With Cisco, protecting your business from cyber attackers is simple. If it's connected, you're protected. is to power an inclusive future for all. And in that future, Mother Nature has a voice. How have things been at work? It's Groundhog Day. You know, just always the builder, never the architect. And the thing is, is I've got ideas big ideas about better products, new revenue streams, smarter <laughs> investments, but, right. But the thing is, is I can't focus on any of that because here I am too busy, like playing whack-a-mole all day. It's a lot of metaphors today. Thank you. So it sounds like you need a platform that drastically reduces the amount of confusion caused by zillions of analytics tools and focuses the data for you. Something that allows me to spend time thinking big picture. Something that would reduce the amount of app system errors, pinpoint areas of improvement, and proactively suggest fixes. Exactly. Why do you know that? Don't know. If we're to build a bridge to an inclusive future, then getting healthcare to everyone, everywhere is critical. Take rural Europe, where local doctors leaving for big cities is creating a medical desert. For patients left behind, many lack the mobility or the flexibility to reach critical urban appointments. The remedy, it turns out, is as much a technological marvel as it is a medical one. Meet Medibus, a state-of-the-art clinic on four wheels. But designing such a wonder came with its own set of challenges, taking everything Cisco knows about mobility, connectivity, video conferencing, and security into account. And together with partner Deutsche Bahn, dispatching it from the cloud to create a 21st century lifeline. Now, no area is too remote, no diagnosis or specialist unavailable. All because one company dared to wonder if the road to better healthcare could literally be the road that runs through town. That's the inclusive future. Cisco, the bridge to possible. Where will you be in five years? Where will we be in five years? In 25, in 50? Let's be here and here with her and him and they. Let's connect them. Let's connect everyone. Let's deliver technology that gives them access to power opportunity. Let's set a new standard for data security and personal privacy. Let's change the system. Promote equality and fairness in the workplace. Let's tear down the barriers to social justice for a more inclusive world. Let's clean house, zero carbon, zero waste because the health of our family is tied to the future of our home. Let's gather resources and partners, steer toward our greatest challenges and accelerate. For the benefit, for all. Cisco has made it its purpose to power an inclusive future for all.
Where will we be in 50 years? Let's go see. Cisco, the bridge to possible. Humans and nature. We're in this together. But to keep coexisting, we need to do more to protect our planet. Cisco Smart Building Solutions and our partners' technology can benefit both humans and nature, helping us make the best use of space and optimize energy consumption for the changing way we work. Making connections that deliver power and enable automation, creating efficiencies that can help the workplace and the planet, and freeing teams to work from anywhere while creating engaging experiences thanks to AI-driven collaboration tools. Sustainability initiatives are part of powering an inclusive future for all. With Cisco Smart Building Solutions, we believe all businesses can better optimize their energy use. Between meeting human needs and a sustainable future, there's a bridge. Cisco, the bridge to possible. Hybrid work is here, it's there, it's everywhere. But for someone to be able to work from here or here, there has to be someone here, making sure everything is safe, secure, consistent. So go ahead, log in from here, dial in from here, sit in from here, assured that someone is here with a view of everywhere, ready to fix anything, anytime, anywhere even here. That's because nobody, and I mean nobody, makes hybrid work work better. Cisco, the bridge to possible. At Cisco, we believe inclusion isn't just the right thing to do. It's the innovative thing to do. Because every invention, every improvement, every achievement, every small step and giant leap inside our company and in the history of the world started when a different perspective was invited. A different voice was elevated. A different opinion was accepted. To us, inclusion is progress. And it's why we're reimagining how people come together, changing the system, tearing down barriers, respecting and honoring each other's identities, promoting equality and fairness, using technology to create more opportunities, and powering a more inclusive future for each other, for good, for all. A team against a king. Seeing against believing. A moment against a moment for the ages. Countless battles, one arena, the realm. The only thing capable of powering the game, the stage, the broadcast, and the worldwide spectacle we know and love, AKA the Cisco Network.
A cyber attack can grind everything to a halt. Cisco Security keeps your network and your company moving forward. Because if it's connected, it's protected. Cisco. Well, you know, the problem is that it's all siloed and we're just trying to run managed and unmanaged distributed applications across cloud-based, on-prem and hybrid infrastructures with mission critical transactions. So identifying any risk or vulnerability across all that, you know, not to mention just like the sheer amount of data and, and, and all of the data noise that comes with it. There's so much noise. <laughs> no human can do all that. And then you tell me that the expectation is five nines uptime? Okay, great, yeah, sure. But with what we're doing, that's crazy. That's just, that's crazy. So you're feeling overwhelmed. Yeah, I try to explain all this to leadership, but they don't get it, you know? I think your partner might be able to help you solve some of these very complex issues. Have you talked to your partner about your feelings? I, I don't know how. Just tell them what you told me. Tell them what you're feeling. It's easy. Say it with me. Hi, Cisco. Uh, hi, Cisco. I feel so overwhelmed. I am so overwhelmed. My business applications and infrastructure are not working well together, and it's impacting my business. Can you help me? My business applications and infrastructure are not working well together, and it's impacting my business. Can you help me? Can you help me? Can you help me? Bingo. Breakthrough. Yeah. Breakthrough. to carry 150, right? Yeah. Should be perfect. Cisco's purpose is to power an inclusive future for all. That's why we're working with the APGA and the USGA to make golf more inclusive. Shot. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you. We're teeing up tomorrow because the more of us who play, the better golf is for all of us. Yeah, nice. great putt. Great putt. Nice job. A hacker doesn't always look like a hacker. A hacker's at home, everywhere. comes in many forms. He's interested in everything. He can work alone. But we're the crew. So much better. A hacker is free. With Cisco, protecting your business from cyber attackers is simple. If it's connected, you're protected. Cisco, 
Our purpose is to power an inclusive future for all. And in that future, Mother Nature has a voice. How have things been at work? It's Groundhog Day. You know, just always the builder, never the architect. And the thing is, is I've got ideas. Big ideas about better products, new revenue streams, smarter <laughs> investments, but, right. But the thing is, is I can't focus on any of that because here I am too busy, like playing whack-a-mole all day. It's a lot of metaphors today. Thank you. So it sounds like you need a platform that drastically reduces the amount of confusion caused by zillions of analytics tools and focuses the data for you. Something that allows me to spend time thinking big picture. Something that would reduce the amount of app system errors, pinpoint areas of improvement, and proactively suggest fixes. Exactly. Why do you know that? I don't know. Welcome to today's session of Women Rock IT. We'll introduce you to members of our Cisco Dream Team today. These remarkable individuals work tirelessly behind the scenes at one of the world's most prestigious sporting events. I'm Emma Reid, the founder of Women Rock IT and Cisco Networking Academy's Global Marketing Manager. It's my honour to be your host today. Now, a little bit about our Women Rock IT program for those joining us for the first time. Since 2014, over 2 million have joined our live broadcast and 1 million enrolling in our Cisco Networking Academy courses to shape their careers. In today's Women Rock IT event, we get ready for an exclusive backstage journey with the Cisco Networking Academy Dream Team. We're about to unveil the groundbreaking work behind the scenes of the world's largest sporting event the Women's World Cup Soccer Tournament held here in Australia. But first, let me share one fun fact with you. Um, did you know that Cisco Dream Team has played a critical role in installing temporary networks at major sporting events worldwide around the world for many years now? We've been the backbone behind Cisco Live, NBA Games, the Olympics, music festivals, and many, many more. But today we have the privilege of talking to two incredible women from the all-female Cisco Dream Team who helped install, service and protect the entire communication system across nine stadiums for major sporting events and media events during the Women's World Cup. Now before we dive in, I want to let you know that being part of today's live audience does entitle you to free course enrolment into Cisco Networking Academy. Explore a range of introductory courses to kickstart your IT skills journey. Plus, we've introduced a new professional skills learning collection with an IT focus ensuring you're very well prepared for success. To scan the QR code to view the free offerings. Details related to course enrolment are also being posted during today's event. Now we'll hold questions for our guest speakers today until after the session and get ready to engage with these incredible experts by having your questions ready. Please place all your questions in the chat window. Thanks and let's get started. Today we'll hear from two of our Dream Team members who worked backstage at the 2023 Women's World Cup in Sydney, a landmark event highlighting the best of women's football on a global stage. Nor Zephyr, a cybersecurity analyst, and Catherine Ashton, a case project officer. But first, we're going to hear from Noor. Welcome, Noor, and thanks for joining us today. Um, thank you, Emma, for your kind introduction. Um, I feel really, I really appreciate you uh, sharing the such kind words. Um, it's wonderful to be here. Um, I'll introduce myself. My name is Noor Zephyr. Um, I'm a cadet. At the at Deloitte, um, I'm a cybersecurity analyst, and I was part of the 2023 Dream Team for the FIFA World Cup. I've had quite a unique journey into IT. Um, it's um, and it's been quite unusual to get into this career path. I will first go um, back to my childhood and explain some of the 
key moments in my life that I think led me to this career path. I've always been a very curious child. Um, in one of the photos you see of me, I took out all the um, kitchen utensils and I sat into the kitchen drawers. Um, it's one of the things I like to do when I was young. Just, I was so curious, so I'd like to take everything out and put them back in. And for some reason, it's something that made me really happy. Um, and I would also like to like share one of the key unique things that I like to do. I was like, I used to love building blocks and rearranging things. And those, those were quite a, one of you, my, one of my um, few quirks. My story starts with my immigrant parents. They came here from Pakistan to Australia in 96. And they were, they gave me foundation and sort of passion to pursue my hobbies, um, which was always been computers. My father used to build computers um, in his garage in his free time. And as a child, I used to observe him and how he used to put the parts together. And I would ask him many questions about, you know, how the CPU worked, how the ROM worked, how each component part of the computers would work together to build, make a computer and how it functioned. My father taught me a bit of programming as well. And he had told me how to troubleshoot computers as well as a child. And those are one of my fond memories during summer working together in the garage and just trying to figure out how things work together. T I guess tinkering with objects and seeing how they work has always been something I've been doing as a child. My mother basically gave me the personality and the drive to pursue anything I want, anything technical. She always told me to do th the hard things, to always challenge myself and better myself, and most importantly, to never stop pursuing education because she always wanted me to get a better education. Before my parents came to Australia, they used to live in a um, an American style factory where people had their own houses within the factory and their own shops and stuff. And a lot of the people that lived there were retired um, army veterans in the army at the time. And they used to have a very good life there. They had their own home, they had their car, they had a maid, and they had a very, you know, a very put together life. And they gave all that up for me. But at the time, I was only a few weeks old in my mom and mother's tummy. And they made the decision they're going to give that up just so their daughter can get an education here in Australia. And the fact they uprooted their entire lives just to make a new start here in Australia just for me. Um, really just sort of set a, a passion and determination for me in my young age to pursue, you know, anything difficult, anything challenging, um, and just take it in stride. And that really is rooted really in my parents' um, wonderful personality and determination. Another part of um, what led, sort of led me my into my career into IT was that I was always very interested in um robotics and also very interested in AI ever since I was young and particularly in high school I first got my exposure to Lego robotics um it was like the first time that I was able to like sort of even further program an actual um object and see how it moved the Lego robotics we built it from scratch we had kits in that class and they had two different types of sensors so one was like a very shoddy camera it was black and white um it could only detect like few objects in front of it not very much and not very much detail at all the other one was a sensor um had a um detect up where it would would where it would interact with the environment and if, if it pushed into something it would stop and then move around so our goal for that project and i remember in my it class was sort of like try to make a way where the um robot could figure out how to navigate each course successfully in different scenarios and it, it was really fascinating so the program itself was not very technical but it was like it was like the first exposure into, into logical thinking and how robots can interact with the environment how and how as we as people can figure out different solutions to these problems and it was really fascinating for me and it definitely cemented that moment where i really wanted to go into robotics Another thing where I was really interested was like artificial intelligence was sort of like, you know, the buzzword, everyone was talking about it. And it's something I always wanted to like consider. It's not, it, when AI was starting out back in those days, it was just simply like a concept. It wasn't like as advanced as it is now. But in my mind, seeing through films and media, I really wanted to pursue something like this and combine it with robotics. And, um, at the time, at the high school, there was a Google Python competition running and my teacher enrolled um, a lot of students who were really interested. And that was the first time where I gained some technical background into 
um, programming, uh, learning a completely new language and just trying to solve challenges. I wasn't particularly good at it, but it was my first chance, time to actually challenge myself further and give myself that one step into the right direction I wanted into my career path as a very young child. I find that women in particular can um, often don't know where to start in the IT career. And I felt like at a young age, just being exposed to different things, fermented and planted an idea. No, this is something I can definitely do and pursue. And the images on the screen just show my passion for combining robotics and AI together and into a creative art form. So I've had a quite a diverse career. Um, and well, I, as a, when I was in high school, I started looking up, you know, YouTube tutorials about ethical hacking and I became really interested in that. And I would experiment, on, you know, on my home network as well and just like just look up tutorials and try to understand how each of them worked. Wasn't very good at it, but, you know, it was a start. It was it was a start of a passion project for me. Um, at school, I always took science subjects and I was particularly very passionate when it came to science and I, did, I just wanted to pursue every form of technical, mathematical concept as possible because I just felt like I had to understand everything. Though when you're in a career, an actual career, you realize you work with so many people and that's and working in a group environment is where you can actually, you know, utilize people's different talents. That's when you can, you know, um, that's where you I sometimes think your greatest potential is actually used. So in high school, I did that. I did all my science subjects. I did really well and got into university and I pursued a degree in um, chemistry, a Bachelor of Science in Chemistry. And I also did a diploma of mechanical engineering um, in Australia at a technical college. So it was just equivalent to a community college, TAFE, TAFE New South Wales, which is technical and further um, education here in Australia. And I did that and I pursued a internship in chemical engineering in Sydney and I did that for one year. It was a very interesting, very laborious job. I was working with hot uh, machines in a very hot, sweaty environment and I was working with different chemicals and different processing plants and yeah, it was, it was a very huge learning experience and a huge responsibility but then COVID happened and because of that I could not leave my working area and I live quite far away from my job in Sydney and I couldn't leave. And for two years I couldn't do my job and I had to leave. So during COVID I had to um, find another job. And um, I during my university years, I used to do early childhood um, um, learning. I used to be a, a diploma educator and I used to work with young kids um, in an early childhood setting and just, this was my job. And I did that for two years during COVID. And then one day I suddenly came across a wonderful opportunity on Reddit, I saw an ad about a cyber academy program, something I never have never heard before. And I thought, oh, OK, what's this about? And I saw that the University of Wollongong um, and Deloitte um, were doing a traineeship program for three years and which I could get paid to study a degree and a, a diploma in IT. And I thought, oh, this is too good to be true. And I throughout my different careers and throughout high school, I was felt intimidated to get into IT because I simply thought, you know, I had to be extremely good at programming. I had to be, you know, have this many projects I've been working on and this many certification. And I felt so intimidated and I thought, oh, this is my opportunity at last. I can finally get into the industry I want. I just put my hat in and thought, you know, I'll give it a shot. I don't know if I'll get in, but it's definitely worth trying. And I got in after many rounds of interviews, after many considerations, I finally got into the program of my dreams and my life changed forever and sort of became the starting point of how I got into the dream team. My TAFE teacher, as part of the program, nominated me for the dream team. For the first two weeks of my program, I did a boot camp, um, uh, a Cisco course called Fundamentals of Networking. During that time, I showcased my tenacity, my curiosity, um, my willingness to learn new concepts and quickly um, adapt to using, you know, um, packet tracer, working with simulated lab environments. And just my teacher found that I was able to pick up concepts so quickly and um, understand difficult concepts so well that he thought, you know, this is something you can actually pursue in the future. And through my willingness to work hard in my diploma studies and boot camp studies, I decided um, he decided to nominate me. Um, it was pretty much last minute, I think, and I quickly did the interview 
questions the night before I submitted it and I thought oh hopefully I can get in I would love to work at the FIFA World Cup that would be such a dream come true and my tape teacher wrote me a wonderful recommendation letter to support me as well and I got in and I went and I've met with one of the most wonderful girls I've ever met throughout my life which has been Tatiana, Catherine, Joy and Fanny and um, working with these girls have been a wonderful opportunity so the progress of getting to Dream Team was um, wonderful. Um, we were very well prepared and equipped before we even entered the stadium. Um, and even before we entered the stadium, we got to work on some wonderful promotional stuff behind the scenes. Got to, you know, record on um, some uh, online content. Um, you know, I actually met the girls for the first time behind the scenes on that set the first day and we all got to know each other really well and it was very exciting because all of us are at different stages of our career at the time but we were passionate about that one thing it was just a very exhilarating experience the fact Cisco wanted young people who never set foot in like an IT industry before and give us this a world stage opportunity and a world class opportunity is just mind-blowing really Before we even entered the stadium, we, we, we participated in three workshops and we got the opportunity to work with Cisco equipment. Um, and the Cisco equipment was very easy to use and we had two university teachers from UTS um, basically teach us the CCNA modules from Net Academy in a couple of weeks. And we and the girls just studied really hard and made sure we understood all the concepts and worked with equipment practically. And we even got the opportunity to, you know, take some of the equipment home and try to test them and bring them back and just really, you know, get a really good understanding of how each and everything worked. Um, and then the uh, Dream Team program itself was seven days long and the team were divided into two groups. So me and Catherine and Fanny were the ones working together, Tatiana and Joy, and the other, another Catherine was um, not in the photo, was on the other team. And the girls had to work with, at two stadiums. So I worked in Homebush um, Stadium and the other girls worked at um, Stadium Australia, which is in Sydney. And it was a very exciting event because it's like we were meeting with Cisco executives and we were, you know, working with the Swisscom telecom team as seen in the photos who have been so helpful to us, so patient with us and teaching us um, what we need to do during that time. They gave us the plans, they gave us the schematics and told us um, it's instructions on how to put the, uh, do the cabling and the networking and the equipment needed at the Media Tribune area, which is, as you can see here in these photos, was um, a completely new experience with me and the fact that I got to set up the Media Tribune area at Homebridge Stadium was unbelievable. The purpose behind um, the Media Tribune area is like journalists and photographers and other media members need to send out information continuously and reliability and they need fast internet connection um, and they won't get paid if they um, photos and information don't go out in like less than a second. So this is like on a big stage event where pretty much most of the world was watching at the time. And the fact that information had to travel out from this ethernet setup to the rest of the world is just like a crazy idea to me. And the fact that we did that was fascinating to me. So we did that, we did that for th the next three days. And um, the it was just a very learning opportunity. All the things we learned in the Netacad classroom, we were able to apply it here. And we were supported throughout the process. We asked many questions. We also went on the field and shouted the Swisscom Telecom team to set up um, other equipment there on the field as well. So this is the completed uh, media tribune area. As you can see, this is what the journalists would see on the day. And it was set up in the stands. So the one in the middle is at Stadium Australia. The other two is at Homebush Stadium. So on day three and four, we were able to meet with Cisco executives at the head office. This is Ben Dawson. Um, it was just it was just like a wonderful opportunity to ask questions and learn more about the career opportunities, how the industry is growing, and all the girls just felt like you know we were we were able to express our ideas and passion and our interest in this industry and actually be heard. 
and actually see a career path forward where we could actually make a mark in this industry and do something really good. And Cisco has been so supportive throughout the process from teaching us from day one and just really supporting our career growth and giving us opportunity to meet with these executives, gave us the confidence to actually see, you know, there is a place for us, us women in the industry and we can make a mark. And the fact that we were able to use our skills, our knowledge and talent at the FIFA World Cup, just really cemented that deal. So the inspirational leaders, again, I met along the way was Ben Dawson, Vice President of Australia and New Zealand, and Jackie G, Senior Vice President and General Manager of Customer Experience for APJC. And meeting Jackie, I think, was really the highlight for the Dream Team members. She basically, her life story, her life experiences gave me a path where I never thought I could actually consider, where I thought, you know, I want to be like Jackie G. Her the path she took, the knowledge she has, the talents and skills she has, and she doesn't have a degree in like com computer science. She had to do it the hard way. And like, I finally saw that, ah, oh, this is it. This is what I want to do. This is my career path. And um, she even offered us girls, you know, mentorships, which is such a kind thing to do and something I really want to take, adv uh, take advantage of and something I would really like to do the for the rest of my life. And the fact that Cisco made that happen is just, amazing and an, ex an amazing feeling and I feel really lucky and blessed to have this opportunity. So through the dream team experience and after the cabling was done and all the networking and the event was finished, we were all, throughout the time and afterwards, after the games were finished, we were we received unprecedented media coverage. So from Cisco, we received like a lot of um, coverage through the social media and Netacad promotions. We were able to do an interview on the Australian, which was taken up quite well. And TAFE near South Wales in particular, my TAFE teacher who nominated me was so proud of what about the fact that I got into the dream team that they published an article about the success of the program, of the uh, Cyber Academy program, and my experience actually at the FIFA World Cup and the dream team itself. And I met many people afterwards in TAFE who was so inspired by the story that they actually changed the career path to networking because they wanted to do something similar. I also later got an opportunity to go on the Illawarra morning radio, the regional radio where I live, and do an interview and discussing my experience at the um, in FIFA Dream Team and you know how I started, how my journey into the career path similar to what I'm doing today. And it's just like the fact that, you know, they are industry members so invested in getting in women into IT and there's so much focus now on women and encouragement for, for women to transition into IT was inspiring. And the fact that I had get the opportunity to do that as well was just unbelievable. And on the right for the region Illawarra newspaper, again, it's a very small town newspaper, but I was just so proud. The fact that my hometown was so proud of me, the fact that I got to work on a world-class stadium and a world-class opportunity by noticed by Cisco, you know, it's a big deal in a small town. And receiving national coverage and regional coverage was sort of the highlight of my career and my, my professional career and my self-growth and confidence, something I would always, always be grateful to Cisco and everyone who made this happen. So this is the opening night. This was the first match, uh, Jamaica versus France. And this is the dream team there at Stadium Australia. So we, our job on the day was troubleshooting the match and making sure all the equipments and systems were, were working. Uh, luckily, we had no issues and everything went really well, um, but it was really interesting to be in the actual room um, where the troubleshooting is done and actually see how they monitor real time and how they go on the field or how they go on to the actual you know, backup um, networking area and just looking at how they test for any failures and stuff. It was just a really great learning experience, looking at schematics and stuff, just asking questions with the Swiss telecom team who were so helpful throughout the process. It was just an amazing, wonderful moment, seeing them opening match, seeing the girls play, seeing our hard work and you know, being uh, our hard work being showcased in the media tribune area where the journalists and the photographers were using, you know, the network, the internet and just uh, yeah, just doing the real-time coverage was just incredible. It was ex an exhilarating event, that one event that I would never forget. It was like really the highlight of my career. In a way, the Dream Team has made a small mark on sporting history, even for Cisco. 
So the semi-final Matildas match was the highest watch Australian match in TV history since um, TV viewership um, recording began, which was like a very, very, you know, amazing moment. The fact that this dream team had a small role in making that happen for people to get their coverage and information, it's just unbelievable for us. And as you can see, um, Cisco had a small role in basically changing the culture of women's sporting forever. You know, this company played a huge role in making sure that women's sports and women's football would be successful in the future because clearly the country had a passion for it and people wanted more for it. And Cisco's coverage made that happen. And the fact that the Dream Team was part of that is just unbelievable. And um, the fact that we got to use our practice skills to make that happen is unbelievable. So in a way, I feel quite emotional in saying that the Dream Team had a small role making a bit of history happen for women and making that step easier for women sporting and for women in IT. And yeah, it's just crazy to think someone who worked in childcare and a completely different industry a year ago would be doing something like this. It's it's unbelievable and a dream come true. Um, and I want to thank the people at Cisco who made this happen who made our dreams possible. And I hope Cisco continues to make a lot of women's dreams possible in IT. There's definitely a future for it. And I'm truly grateful and thankful for it. And I would like to thank you again, Emma, for introducing me. And it's been so wonderful to talk to you, even throughout the time we worked together backstage um, at the FIFA World Cup, um, making sure to, when I met you at the office, you know, with the Cisco executives was so nice to meet you and all the staff, people and the staff members who just were working actively to make sure that the dream team would succeed. So thank you very much. Thanks, Noor, for sharing with us your career journey and the opportunities you gained by participating in the Cisco Dream Team. Now I'd like to pass it on to Catherine Ashton, who also joins us from her home here in Australia. Welcome, Catherine, and thanks for joining us today. Thanks so much, Emma. I'm so excited to be here and to have this opportunity to talk a bit about my experience moving into IT um, and also about the impact that Cisco Dream Team has had for me. Um, so I guess that the best place to start is at the start. Um, so I grew up in the 90s and the early 2000s in a really small village in rural Oxfordshire in the UK. Um, and it was only when I was preparing this that I realized how little exposure I actually had to technology when I was growing up. Um, this is in the days of dial-up internet, um, which in a remote community is very inconsistent and not something you really want to get around. Um, there weren't laptops, there weren't smartphones. I didn't know a single person that knew how to code or that was playing around with computers. Um, and even in school, like the only real learning we had around technology was a library research project where we got on Encyclopedia Britannica and we looked something up. Um, or I think we might have had a class on how to use a spreadsheet. Um, but there weren't people with passion or with knowledge or with experience in technology in any of the spaces I was growing up. Um, and so what that really meant was like, there was no way for me to learn more or to get excited. You can only really get a passion by things that you're seeing, doing, being exposed to. Um, and so I think when I was going through school, a lot of that was like, in the sport um, or in science, because that was what I was being shown. Um, and I think to add to that is, you know, this is at a time when those gender norms in terms of toys are so prevalent. Um, so my brother was the one with the games console and I had the dance mat or the dolls. Um, and I remember as a kid trying to sneak into my brother's room to like play on his video game. Um, I don't know how many of you guys have older siblings, but if you do, you'll probably know that did not go well. Um, and so that really wasn't an opportunity for me at that age. Um, and so as someone that had done pretty well at science in school, I was basically told the next thing you do is you go to university. 
Um, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I had no idea where I wanted my career to go. So I did what every rational 18 year old would do. And I picked the university where Harry Potter was filmed because there's no better reason to go somewhere. Um, so I studied chemistry, physics, maths, and philosophy. Um, when I say I had no idea what I wanted to do, I really mean it. Um, so I was really sort of focusing on getting a degree, um, but it was such a struggle because I kind of didn't care about any of the subjects in any meaningful way. I was really just studying it because that's what you're supposed to do. Um, the biggest thing I probably learned from that degree was that none of those areas was the thing I wanted to do with my life. Um, but what I did get out of the experience was I did get to put on my gown and walk down the corridors of Hogwarts to go and graduate. Um, but after that, I really was back to square one. What am I going to do with my life? So I applied for some jobs. I started working in a customer service role, um, answering phone calls, processing orders. I moved to a different company doing a similar thing. Um, and then I moved into a training role. Um, but all of this was still in my rural space in Oxfordshire. Um, for those of you that don't know, uh, Durham itself is a like as small a city as you can get but it's about 90% student population. Um, so I kind of spent all of my life in pretty quiet spaces and I had this idea, I'm gonna move to London. Um, and I was talking to a friend who was like, hey, if you still have no idea what you wanna do, why not join the civil service? There's so many different opportunities, you can move between departments really easily like it could be a great way for you to go and explore where you want your career to go um and so I was applying for some jobs and I guess it's a classic but you never know how impactful a moment's gonna be until after you've been through it um and so I applied to the independent inquiry into child sexual abuse to be an executive assistant and there were three positions available at the time. Um, one was to support the head of the inquiry, one was to support the second in command, and one was for the director of IT, information management and information security. And when they gave me the phone call to say, hey, we'd like to take, uh, offer you the job, they were like, the director of IT, information management, information security, his whole team really needs support and they really need someone that's gonna be able to like get in and help everyone, not just the director, would you be up for that? And I was like, yeah, sounds great. And I guess that was really the starting point of my journey. Um, you know, 27 years to that point, had no idea how important technology really was to the way in which organizations function. I had had computer problems and gone to our IT team and said, hey, please, can you fix this? But never really seen that back end cataloging information, looking after it, making sure that it wasn't going to be breached. Um, and especially in a place where the nature of the information was so sensitive, like it really sparked something within me. Um, and one of the really exciting things in that position as well was that there were two really senior um, members of the directorate that were women. And that was the first time I'd seen women really succeeding in technology. I don't think up until that point that I'd ever had an IT person that was a woman help me with a problem. Um, and so it was really cool to see this space where like women exist within this industry. Um, and I remember I'd been in my role for about nine months when GDPR was being rolled out by the European Union and the UK government. Um, and our data protection officer, Julia Jones, was this incredibly knowledgeable woman. She 
had worked for the National Archives, so she knew everything there is to know about retention and about data privacy and about how long and what we need to keep and what we need to do with information to make sure it's the right standard. Um, but she'd also worked as a management consultant. So she had a lot of knowledge of industry best practice, of supporting other organizations. Um, and she went to our director and said, if we're going to get compliant with GDPR, I need support and I want it to be Catherine. So I moved into her team and it was such an incredible learning experience. Um, she was such an empowering woman and such a clear role model. Um, but I also, because she was about to retire, she really was like, I just wanna give you every opportunity you want. So she put me on courses, she'd get me set up doing investigations, running audits. Um, she really pushed me towards working with our head of cybersecurity um, to just give me as much exposure to the industry and to the field as possible. Um, and in this head of cybersecurity was another really life-changing woman. Um, her name is Petronella Cragwell and she is an absolute gun. She was the first woman I personally ever met that like knew how to code, that knew how to like run a cyber investigation she would we would sit in a meeting and everyone would be talking and we'd have been talking about it for weeks and then she would just sit there and be like this will solve your problem and everyone would look at her and go oh yeah and I think that was when I saw like the real impact of the technical aspect of running an organization um, and that was the moment where I started to think Maybe this is something I really want to do, but if I want to do it, I actually need to understand a lot more about the technical side of things. Um, so I carried on for a little while and I got more and more excited about the idea. Um, unfortunately, Julia did then retire and Petronella left the organization. Um, and so I was in this position where my two sort of like guiding lights had moved and I needed to decide what I wanted to do and where I was going to learn this from. Um, and that is when I decided to move to Australia to study IT. All I can say about studying IT is that if you have a completely non-technical background and the most you've done is like a really tiny bit of coding with the head of cybersecurity in your organization, uh, it can feel pretty overwhelming. When I started class, I felt so behind. And it was probably like the first time in my life where I felt completely out of my depth. I would sit there and they would be talking about concepts or protocols and I knew nothing. Um, and I was so worried by the whole process, but I felt so fortunate that uh, TAFE, where I'm studying, uh, covered all of their networking through the Cisco Networking Academy, because in lectures, I would be like blank face, no idea, but I could go home, I could read through all of the content, I could do the quizzes, I could do the packet tracers, I could really learn at my own pace. Um, and by just being able to put all of my time and energy, it kind of did two things. One of them is it really highlighted how much of a passion I have for this, um, how much I really want to have a career in IT. But also it helped me catch up and actually even get a bit ahead of the curve and get one of the higher grades in my year. Um, and because I'd been doing well in class, our teachers actually sent an email and said, hey, there's this opportunity coming up with the Cisco Dream Team. It's part of the Women's World Cup. Like, you should apply. And the deadline for the applications was the same day as our last assignment was due for the semester. We had three exams in the week prior, and I got to the final day, submitted my assessment. It must have been nine o'clock at night, and I went, oh. I really need to get this done. Like, I want to be a part of this dream team, 
but I really had to get my grades first. Um, and so there I was grabbing my phone, babbling into the screen, trying to be like, oh, I'm so passionate. I really want to do this. Uh, really hoping for the best. Hit submit. Thought, well, I've done everything I can, but it's probably not going to happen. Um, but I guess we all know because I'm here today that it did happen and I was able to be a part of this experience. Um, and being part of the dream team was such an amazing opportunity, meeting other people in a similar position that are studying and pursuing a career in IT, um, getting to really see what it's like to be part of like a technical organization. Um, I think that it was really interesting because all of my experiences within technology, um, including my current role, are within an IT team, within an organization that has a very non-technically related function. <clears throat> Whereas actually being part of the technical side of the Women's World Cup, like the biggest women's sporting event in history, um, especially for someone that has loved sport as a kid. I don't know if you noticed the me as a little kid in my hockey school photo, but that's that was something that really mattered to me. And so being in a stadium in and of itself, amazing experience. Being in a stadium, putting what I've been studying and working really hard towards into practice with like some of the top people in the field, like mind blowing. Um, but I think that probably the biggest thing that I got from the experience um, was the fact that everyone within Cisco was so supportive and wanted to make it this really amazing experience for us. You know, there's the getting an article in the Australian Business Review, um, having the opportunity to speak about the experience there. Um, the work that they did on the videos that's like something that we get to keep forever um, but also just the way they made connections the way that they would talk to us the way that they were like if there's anything we can do to support you like we want to help you with your careers we want to make this a really great experience I think it showed me the kind of person that I want to be within the industry um, and I think that you know, for a sporting event with a tagline of beyond greatness, being part of the dream team at this event, it was so relevant. It just all fit together so well. It was a event, it was a dream team, it was an activity, everything about it was about, it's not just the bare minimum, it's beyond that. It's what is the best way that we can have this experience for everyone that's involved. Um, and I am so grateful to Emma and to all of the team that put all of that energy and effort into us um, and really helped us with our careers and moving forward. Um, since being part of the Dream Team, my organization that I've been working for um, as an admin person uh, actually recognized my passion and my skills within the IT industry. Um, I already had a Prince2 qualification, but they put me through a business analysis qualification um, and also moved me into our IT project team. Um, and I feel really grateful both to them and to the Dream Team for creating this opportunity that whilst I'm studying, I'm able to put my learnings into practice um, and I'm able to actually start working in IT and pursuing that career. Um, but I guess that it's still the same thing that I mentioned before of, this is a very non-technical organization that is giving me an opportunity to support the IT provision within it. But through being part of the dream team, it kind of entirely changed the direction of where I think I'm going. Before, I always saw that as the long-term pathway. I wanted to be an information security specialist in an organization that does good in the world. Um, but what I learned from being part of the dream team is firstly that every technology organization is contributing to 
the good that's in the world in all of these other organizations and are hugely important because without them, those organizations can't function. But also I learned that there's so many more careers in technology than just that space. Um, talking to solutions architects, talking to developers, talking to researchers, to sales, to marketing, um, meeting with the chief experience officer for um, Asia Pacific, seeing so many people and particularly women in such varied roles really opened my eyes to the possibilities that are out there um, and to the fact that I don't have to have it decided now but that all of the technical knowledge I'm learning um, is something that I want to be able to use when I finish. Um, and I'm really excited to see where those opportunities take me. Thanks, Catherine, for sharing your personal story with us today. So good to hear how you have made your way into the tech industry and what you had to do along the way. You've both brought your unique expertise to the table to deliver women's sport to fans all over the world. We're gonna take questions now for our speakers. I have a question I'd like to ask both of you, um, but Noor, how about you go first? How did you hear about this opportunity with Cisco? I first heard this opportunity from my um, TAFE teacher, um, my community college teacher, he was really impressed by my work um, during my, the time, my boot camps and my diploma studies. And he said, give this a go. I think you'd be really good for this fit. And this is an industry level experience, which is, which is highly recognized and really appreciated by employers. And this will look really good on your resume. And I thought, okay, I can't give this up. The fact that I'll get to work at FIFA and the fact that I'll work in a, a, at a Cisco event is just more than enough for me to say, yes, I'll have to do this. So it was definitely from my teacher. I've got another question for you both. Um, Catherine, why don't you go first? Where do you want to go from here? Um, I think that's such a great question. I think if you had asked me before being part of the Dream Team, I would have so clearly said, I want to be a Chief Information Officer um, in a small organisation. I really want to protect information for people. I want to provide a support to organizations that really don't have any technical knowledge. Um, but actually, through being part of the Dream Team, I think I learned so many different possibilities that are out there, so many different ways to have an impact. Um, so actually, I think the answer now is, I have no idea, but I'm really excited to find out. Um, I think most of the best opportunities in my life have come in those periods where I don't know the answer, I don't know where I'm going, but I just take the opportunities that are in front of me. Um, and so I'm really excited to see where this takes me. Thanks, Catherine. Over to you, Noor, to tell us where you'd like to go from here. Well, uh, after the completion of my traineeship, I would like to work hopefully in the public sector, um, helping in good government departments and maybe lead cybersecurity initiatives there, maybe possibly like to work in the defense or in private sector. Um, hopefully one day be someone like Jackie G and where her role is. I find her so inspiring and the career path she's taken, I would like to be someone like her. After the experience on the dream team you have both had, um, what advice would you give to anyone considering a career in tech? No, let's, let's hear from you first. It doesn't matter if you're a young age student or a mature age student or someone transitioning into IT. Whatever skills you have, you can use them. And if you find an opportunity, take it immediately. Always be on the search out for new opportunities. This could be in an education setting or it could be in a professional setting. You will find a way to get into industry and you will be able to use your skills. No matter what your background is, it could be in arts or creative projects, or it could be, you know, something analytical or technical. I mean, we'd be no background at all. There's always a place for someone here in IT, and we need people with different skills, different mindsets, different perspective to make sure that the IT industry can address society's needs. And these societal needs are complex, and there's a cog in the piece um, where everybody can fit in. So I would say to everyone, be curious, be resilient, um, and make sure to take every opportunity you can. And if you make the best of it, doors will open and you can definitely find a wonderful, fulfilling career path for your professional development. Thanks, Noor. 
Catherine, over to you to give us that little bit of advice to anyone considering a career in technology. Um, I think that what I've seen so far is that there are so many different entry points to a career in technology. It can be an internship, it can be through study, it can be through entry level roles that often don't need any formal qualifications. Um, but actually my experience with IT managers has very much been, if you've got the right attitude, if you're there to learn, then there will be opportunities presented to you and there is a way of really moving forward from whatever you start with. Um, so my advice would be treat every opportunity as a chance to learn, um, take every opportunity that you are offered um, and just have a really great attitude, work hard um, and the opportunities will come up for you. Thanks, Catherine. And our last question for you today, ladies. Here's a fun one. If you could have a cup of coffee with anyone in the tech industry, who would that be? No, I'm coming your way. Um, who would you like to have a cup of coffee with? Uh, I'd like to meet Jackie G again. <laughs> uh, it's just the impact she left on the Dream Team members and us is like insurmountable. I can't even describe how inspiring she is. And she's so approachable and well, just like entire life story is just so inspiring. I guess I'd love to meet her again. In terms of who else I would like to meet, um, I guess Sam Altman of OpenAI. I would like to talk to him more about AI stuff. That would be something very fascinating, I think. Um, I just, yeah, I just, I would like to just meet more. Oh, there's so many people. I can't even think. Part of me also wanted to meet Elon Musk just once to see what it'd be like and his opinions on different topics as well. But mostly I think Jackie G is someone more well-rounded, more grounded and yeah, someone who just genuinely has the best at heart for people and who wants to leave a positive impact on society. I think that she's a person I'd like to meet again. Thanks, Noor. Catherine? Oh man, that's such a great question. I think there's so many big names that you could so easily say. Um, I think for me, it's probably Petronella Cragwell that I mentioned before. Um, I know that sounds like a really simple answer, like why wouldn't you wanna meet with like all of these people that are pioneering solutions? Um, I guess that as someone that started really late in technology, um, there's heaps of questions I could ask any number of technical experts and I would learn so much from all of them. Um, but since leaving the organization, I definitely lost contact with Petronella and to have the opportunity to be like, thank you so much for what you did for me. This completely changed my life through knowing you and this is where I am now. I actually think that that would be way more meaningful than any snippets of information that I could get from anyone else within the industry. Thanks, Catherine. And I just actually want to close out today and say thank you to you both, um, Catherine Knorr, for joining us today. It was a really fun Women Rock IT session and so exciting to see what you did backstage with Cisco Dream Team. And unfortunately, that's all we have time for today. Before you go, please note that today's presentations and recordings will be made available after the session. The link to our website has been placed in the chat window. As a reminder, being part of our live audience today does entitle you to Cisco funded courses to help you explore your passion for technology. Lastly, your feedback really is important to us. Please complete the survey and receive a certificate of participation. Please scan the QR code on the screen to access today's survey. And we look forward to you joining our next Women Rock IT event on April the 25th, as we celebrate International Girls in ICT Day. In this special edition, we empower you with actionable steps to becoming AI ready. Please visit our website for details. Thanks for joining us and enjoy the rest of your day.
If we're to build a bridge to an inclusive future, then getting healthcare to everyone, everywhere is critical. Take rural Europe, where local doctors leaving for big cities is creating a medical desert. For patients left behind, many lack the mobility or the flexibility to reach critical urban appointments. The remedy, it turns out, is as much a technological marvel as it is a medical one. Meet Medibus, a state-of-the-art clinic on four wheels. But designing such a wonder came with its own set of challenges, taking everything Cisco knows about mobility, connectivity, video conferencing and security into account, and together with partner Deutsche Bahn, dispatching it from the cloud to create a 21st century lifeline. Now, no area is too remote, no diagnosis or specialist unavailable. All because one company dared to wonder if the road to better healthcare could literally be the road that runs through town. That's the inclusive future. Cisco, the bridge to possible. Where will you be in five years? Where will we be in five years? In 25, in 50? Let's be here and here with her and him and they. Let's connect them. Let's connect everyone. Let's deliver technology that gives them access to power opportunity. Let's set a new standard for data security and personal privacy. Let's change the system. Promote equality and fairness in the workplace. Let's tear down the barriers to social justice for a more inclusive world. Let's clean house, zero carbon, zero waste because the health of our family is tied to the future of our home. Let's gather resources and partners, steer toward our greatest challenges and accelerate. For the benefit, for all. Cisco has made it its purpose to power an inclusive future for all. Where will we be in 50 years? Let's go see. Cisco, the bridge to possible. Humans and nature. We're in this together. But to keep coexisting, we need to do more to protect our planet. Cisco Smart Building Solutions and our partners' technology.